Hello. In our first Related Rates video, we saw an example of a ladder sliding on the wall and saw how the Pythagorean theorem or right triangles might be used in forming relationships between two variables. In this example, we're going to take a look at another example involving triangles. And in this case, we use similar triangles, another very valuable tool for relating quantities and problems such as these. So we're going to take a look at the following problem. A bright light hangs from the bottom of a helium-filled balloon, which is released at a point P on the ground and rises straight upward at a rate of 5 feet per second. A 6-foot man walks away from the point P at a rate of 4 feet per second. The bright light attached to the balloon causes the man to cast a shadow, and the shadow changes length as the positions of the man and the balloon change. How fast is the length of the shadow changing at the instant when the light is 50 feet in the air and the man is 40 feet from the point P? I'm going to remind you in your uh, section on related rates problems, this is page 2 of section 3.10, there is a chart or table that gives a strategy for solving these problems. I included this table here in the uh, video, right down here. That table in the book has six steps. I've added a seventh step, which uh, we looked at in the last video too, which is to interpret and discuss your answer. So we're going to start then by drawing a picture and naming the variables and constants. Okay. Now, uh, I want you to pause the video here and take as long as you need to draw a good picture for this particular problem. Well, welcome back. I hope you came with a picture looking something like this. Probably not quite this high quality, but uh, something that, that conveys this idea. Okay. So we're going to start by labeling the variables. And uh, in these kind of problems, again, you want to read through the problem carefully and take note of the things that are changing and uh, give those quantities, which are probably going to be important in the problem, some variable names. So uh, we're going to start by looking at the phrase that says that the balloon is rising. Rises straight upward, and so that means we're going to be interested in this quantity. So we're going to start by letting b be the height in feet of the light above the point p, and as usual, we want to put that uh, quantity in the picture so we see the b labeled over here. B denotes this particular height. The other motion comes from the man walking away from the uh, point p. And so let's let m be the distance in feet of the man from the point p. So again, you want to put that into the picture. And there's the m. And then finally, the other change, changing quantity in the picture is the length s of the shadow. So we're going to let s denote the length of the shadow the man is casting. We've tried to indicate the shadow over here by this darker line, which goes from the man's feet out to the point where the light edge of the point where the light is obscured by, by the man. So let s be this quantity, and again we included that in the picture. And then finally we want to talk about constant quantities too. The one important constant quantity given is the height of the man. He's six feet tall, so we denote that in the picture also. Now we read the problem again looking for numerical information. This is often information on how fast some quantities are changing. So in this problem, again, the balloon is going up. And that means that B is getting bigger. B is increasing. And we're told the rate of increase, told the uh, balloon is rising at a rate of 5 feet per second. So that means B is getting longer at that rate. And so we give B, which is a function of t as usual, we give it a, a derivative dB dt of 5 feet per second. The other information we're given is how fast the man is walking from the light. That tells us how fast m is changing, where m is the distance from the point p to the man. And again, as you read through the problem, you see that is given by 4 feet per second. One other change in quantity that's important is what is the quantity that is to be found? What is it we want to know? What are we trying to answer? And of course, again, we can find that statement in the problem 
want to know how fast is the length of the shadow at a particular instant in time. So in other words, what is ds dt at the instant when v is 50 and m is 40? Again, as we said in the last video, do not at this point set v equal to 50 and m equal to 40. v and m are changing quantities. We have to account for that change first, and then later on, We'll figure out what the DSDT is at the particular instant when B equals 50 and M equals 40. Okay, so having uh, decided what quantities we are given, we've labeled the variables, we've identified what, what we want to find and the instant in which we want to find it. Uh, it's now time to take a look at a relation between the two variables or in this case it's three variables. So we have B, M, and S. Okay. So we've uh, got those quantities labeled in the picture. Again, M is part of this horizontal segment from P out to the man. And then S is the other part of the segment from the man out to the point where the uh, light from the, the beam of light from the light finally clears the man's head. Okay, so what's the relationship here? Well, let's put some labels on the pictures, label some other vertices, A, the light, B, the top of the man's head, C, the end of his shadow, and we can identify two triangles in here that are similar, similar triangles. These are the large triangle that goes A, P, C. There's one triangle. And that is similar to the smaller triangle that goes B, D, C. Okay. Those triangles are similar because they have the same angles. Each has a right angle. They share this vertex angle out here. And so if two angles of the triangle are the same, the two triangles are similar. So we can use what we know about similar triangles. In particular, we're going to take the ratio of the large side of the big triangle right there to its long leg, okay. and that gives us the relation AP over PC, and that ratio has to be the same in the smaller triangle. The analogous leg is the height of the man BD and this distance DC. If we convert those into lengths as described by the variables, AP has length B, PC Let's see, from P out to C, we have this distance that includes M plus S, and so PC is equal to M plus S, BD is 6, and finally SD, or DC, is S. And so our variables are related by the ratio that we see up here, B plus MS equals 6 over S. We're going to work with that re relationship. Uh, we're first going to simplify it a little bit. If we clear fractions, multiply both sides by S times M plus S, we find the simpler looking relationship BS equals 6 times M plus S. So that's the relationship between the variables in question, the two changing quantities B and M, and the S, the length of the shadow, whose uh, rate of change we wish to find. Once you've got this relationship set up, it's time to do our differentiation. Again, as is always the case in these problems, everything is a function of t, even though we don't see any t's in the problem. So differentiate with respect to t, it certainly makes sense. So we go to this relationship that we had earlier and apply d dt to both sides. And so on the left, we have the derivative with respect to t of the product bs. And on the right, the derivative with respect to t of the product 6 times m plus s. So we'll do this differentiation. We'll use the product rule on the left because we have a product of two functions here, both functions of s. The 6 is a constant, so it can come out in front. Then we'll just differentiate the sum m plus s. And so that leads to the following. Here's the product rule. The derivative of the first function, b, times the second s. 
then the first function b times the root of the second s, so the product rule comes down to give us this part. Here's the 6 factored out in front, and then multiplied by the derivative of m and the derivative of s, so dm dt ds dt. So there is our differentiated relationship, and we now see the quantity we were interested in, the ds dt, coming into the problem. Now that we know the relationship between the changes and the variables, it's time to ask what happens at a particular instant in time. So we've kept a record here of the changes that we know about, and at this stage we now can put in the given numerical values and calculate the desired rate of change, that is ds dt, at the instant when b equals 50 and m equals 40. So now that we have the change incorporated in this derivative formula, we're now going to let b equal 50, m equal 40, and let db dt and dm dt be the rates which are given. So we're going to put all those numbers into this relationship here. And when we do that substitution, we have db dt, and this becomes 5 feet per second, times s plus 50, b is 50 feet at this instant, ds dt, of course this is what we're trying to find, that equals 6 feet, the height of the man, times 4 feet per second, that's dm dt, then plus 6 feet times ds dt. Now it's ds dt we want to find, there's two of them here, so we'll do a little algebra to isolate that. I'll subtract 6 ds dt from 50 ds dt to get 44 ds dt, Bring everything else to the other side, and after the algebra we find ds dt is given by 6 feet times 4 feet per second minus 5 feet per second times s, and then divided by 44 feet. I might pause the video a moment, check this calculation, make sure that algebra makes sense. So here is our relationship for ds dt, and we're going to use this now to find how fast the length of the shadow is changing, that is, what is ds dt at the instant in question. Now notice uh, we have all numbers here except for this one appearance of s. We're going to have to take care of that. And that's just a little more arithmetic. So we need the value of s at this instant to complete the calculation. We're going to use the relationship that we have between the variables we found earlier, bs equals 6 times m plus s. So, and if we want then at the instant when b equals 50, m equals 40, we can replace b by 50, m by 40 in this relationship. We get this expression and then solve for s, which turns out to be 60 over 11. And of course that is given in feet, it's the length of the shadow. So we're going to replace this s value down here by 60 over 11 and finish off the arithmetic. So we put this value into the equation star, the red star is kind of marked the two things we have to look at. And with that arithmetic here's what happens. The 6 times 4 gives 24. So that calculation gives that 24. We see the 5 times s over here, s is the 60 elevenths divided by 44. We've taken care of the units here now and uh, factored out feet per second behind, and then the other feet units from the 6, the 44, and the s which is in feet cancel, so we do get the correct units of 6 feet per, of feet per second. The arithmetic gives us minus 9 over 121 feet per second, which is about minus 0 0.074 feet per second. And so that's the rate of change of the shadow. So to finish off, we want to just interpret or summarize our answer. That's step 7. So what does this all mean? So we've now answered our question at the instant when the light is 50 feet above the ground and the man is 40 feet from the point, P. The length of the man's shadow is changing at a rate of approximately minus 0.074 feet per second. This rate of change is negative, so the shadow length is decreasing at this instant. So at this instant, as the man walks away from P, his shadow gets shorter. 
And that's the end of the story.